Hi everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and I am super excited today because I have Christopher Lawley on the channel. Now, if you don't know Chris, uh, Chris is a friend of mine, he's a fellow YouTuber, and he makes some of the best iPad content on the platform, in my opinion. And I have him on today, ironically, not to talk about the iPad, but to talk about the Mac. So much like me, he recently picked up an M1 Mac and is using it to complement his iPad workflow. And so he's gonna talk for a few minutes today about how he's using an M1 Mac mini to do that. Uh, and then I am using a MacBook Air and I am kind of doing similar things, but we're doing completely different parts of our workflow on the Macs. And so I made a video for his channel that will be linked in the description where you can check out how I'm using my MacBook Air to complement what I do on the iPad. And so so I hope you enjoy Chris's video. I want to thank him for coming on and having me on his channel as well. So let's jump into it. For those that don't know, I'm Christopher Lawley. I have a YouTube channel where I talk about working from an iPad and taking better advantage of the iPad you might already have. I want to thank Matt Birchler for having me on his channel. While we're both big iPad users, we both recently got M1 Macs, so we figured this would be a good opportunity for us to do a collab and talk about how we're using those Macs to complement our workflows. And that's exactly it. I recently picked up an M1 Mac Mini not to replace my iPad because I use my iPad for everything, video editing, writing, podcast and photo editing, so much but I wanted a Mac mini to complement that workflow, not to replace it. So I'm gonna walk you through a few ways that I use my Mac mini with my workflow. One of the first things I did with my Mac mini is I decided I didn't want it sitting on my desk. It's not my main computer and it's not something I work with every single day. I wanted it out of the way. So I found this mount on Amazon that allowed me to mount it to the wall right underneath my desk. So that way it's out of the way, but still within reach if I need it. Then I had to think about how I could interact with it. I have a monitor on my desk, but I primarily use that with my iPad for a more ergonomic desk setup. I could easily plug that Mac mini into that monitor and use it that way, but since I primarily work from an iPad, I wanted a way to control that Mac mini from my iPad. There's a lot of software options, but I ended up going with Luna Display. It's actually a hardware and software option. You get this little dongle that plugs into the USB-C port on your Mac, and you can remote in to your Mac from your iPad from that. You can use the keyboard and trackpad on your iPad to interact with the Mac. And because it has this dongle, it means you get hardware acceleration. You can use it at a retina level display so it's nice, crisp, and clean. It's not fuzzy like some software-based options. Then another upgrade I knew I was gonna want was more storage. I went with the one terabyte 16 gigs of RAM option for the Mac mini. Now 16 gigs of RAM is plenty of RAM for what I'm doing, but I wasn't entirely sure one terabyte would be enough. Now. Before I did this whole project here, I had a PC file server with a two terabyte NVMe chip. For those that are unfamiliar, NVMe is the fastest storage on the market. So I found this device on OWC. It's a external NVMe storage device. So I was able to take the chip that I already have, put it in it and attach it to my Mac mini. So it gave me an extra two terabytes of storage. So now I'm up to three. The main reason why I got this Mac mini was to replace that PC file server. I really didn't like having that around. I'm not a big fan of Windows, but it served a purpose. It was to archive projects, to create backups for any footage that I'm currently working with because, and this is a whole separate video, I'm not super thrilled about the iPad's backup strategy. So I like to have an extra computer here so I can dump that footage on it. I also like keeping an archive of all my old projects around. That's not something I wanna keep on my iPad that takes up a lot of extra space. So that's where a file server comes in. And it's really easy to send files from your iPad to a Mac. I'll go ahead and show you how to do that now. So it's pretty easy to set up a shared folder. So that way you can add files to your Mac from your iPad. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into system preferences here sharing and you want to make sure this file sharing option is checked that's important to basically allow file sharing the other thing that we're going to want is this piece of information right here now it's not going to say oracle.local it's going to say whatever your computer name is dot local so you're going to want to write that down or remember that or whatever like we're going to need that piece of information so let's go over here and create our shared folder so i'm going to right click new folder and we're just going to call this share and then what we can do, there's a couple of ways you can make this a shared folder. One way is you can right click on it, you can do get info, and you could just hit the shared folder button, or in system preferences, you can hit this plus button right here, and then just browse to that folder and select it. 
Okay, so now our folder is shared and it's shared with these user groups right here. So this is my user right here. This is what I want. I have read and write privileges, which means I can both see what's in that folder and add stuff to that folder. There's also staff and everyone. Now, I'm a big proponent of network security. I used to be a network admin. So I don't want everyone on the network because that's what that means. Everyone that's on this network to be able to see what's in that folder. So I'm gonna put no access for them. And then for staff, I'm just gonna get rid of that. So now the only person that has access to this folder is me, my user. So let's go over to the iPad now and I'll show you how to access this folder. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into files. And then you want this three dot menu option right here. There'll be three options. We want connect to server. Now, remember earlier when I said you needed your computer name where it said your computer name dot local, that's where we're gonna enter this. So for me, it's oracle dot local. And then we're gonna hit connect. We want registered user. So you're gonna enter your username and your password for your computer. So for me, my username is Christopher Lolly, And then you're gonna enter your password for whatever you use to log into your computer. Once you have that entered, just hit next. It'll connect. So now you can see all your shared folders. We can easily add that into split view over here. Jump back to the on my iPad section or whatever's on your computer. Uh, we can open up that shared folder and you can just drag and drop stuff there and it'll be on your Mac waiting for you when you go there. And like I mentioned, I'm not a big fan of the way the iPad handles backups. It just backs up an image of your iPad to iCloud and your device has to be off and plugged into power for it to automatically do that. So it doesn't happen on a schedule that I'm super happy with. With having a Mac mini around, it means I can use a service like Backblaze. So it backs up all the files and folders on that computer to the cloud. And that way I have a nice offsite backup in case something were to ever happen to my house. Another reason why I got this Mac mini was to be an automation server. I talk on my channel a lot about automations, especially shortcuts, but there's so much more to the world of automation. I'm only scratching the surface on my channel right now, but having a dedicated Mac mini on all the time opens up so many doors for automation. Now, I haven't been able to dive into it that much. I just haven't had the time recently, uh, but I do hope to make videos about that in the future, especially around apps like Hazel and Keyboard Maestro. Some of the stuff those apps can do is just mind blowing. Then there's a few miscellaneous options. One being a YouTube uploader. I'm a YouTuber if you haven't figured that out by now. Uh, you can kind of upload YouTube videos from an iPad, uh, but it doesn't really work that well. And because of the limitations of the iPad, wherever you're uploading it from, that always has to be on the display. So that means you can't use your computer. You can't just leave that up in the background for it to go, it'll time out. So having a Mac mini to upload videos is really nice. I also use the Mac mini for podcast recording. Now I edit all podcasts on my iPad, but recording podcasts, especially when you're recording with other people, it's really difficult to do from an iPad. I kind of have a workaround, but it doesn't work out it's not to the level that I'm super happy with. Recording a podcast from a Mac means I can have different softwares recording my track and other people's Skype audio and things like that. Then finally, a backup workstation. I do these big projects every year when a new version of iPad OS is announced. Every September when it's released, I put out a big video covering all the features of it. That means I have to be on the beta of iPad OS all throughout the summer and usually on my main working iPad, which causes a lot of issues, especially like a couple of years ago when iPad OS 13 was coming out, it broke my video editing software for a couple of weeks. So I couldn't put out a video. I can't have that happen anymore. So I wanted this Mac mini to be here as a backup workstation in case something like that were to ever happen again. I hope it doesn't, but it's there if I need it. So that's it for this video. Thanks again to Matt Birchler for having me on his channel. If you wanna see how he's using his Mac, you can go check that video out on my channel. I'm sure he'll put the link in the description.